तत्सवितुर्वर्णीय भर्गो देवस्याधीम धीयो यो न प्रचोदया I bow to the Lord of the three worlds. May He enlighten our minds. May we all be wrapped in the joy of our true being. I talked yesterday about joy as being something that is native to you and that you can overcome any obstacle. One of the best ways of overcoming obstacles is, in fact, to be in joy. Because when you feel that joy and don't let anything touch that joy, you'll find that nothing can touch you. I have been at, uh, during in experiences when uh, if I had allowed myself to give in, I would have become miserable. But I said, no, my nature is joy. And then it didn't touch me. Rather, I felt joyful in what people were doing to try to hurt me. Let it be. This is the nature of the world. It would be a very dull show if everything went beautifully. What makes it interesting, I've given you this example before, supposing you read a novel in which the hero is a young man born into a wealthy home and by the influence of his contacts he gets a good job in a good firm and he meets the boss's daughter and they fall in love and he's, uh, he gets married and is promoted and finally becomes the president of the firm and you would put the book down probably long before the end, saying, what a boring book. But supposing the hero is born in poverty and has to work his way up against great odds, maybe a drunken father and all sorts of people trying to tell him, Whom are you, who are you to aspire any higher than you are, and so on. He just determines that he will do his best to make something of his life. And I have met people like that. You know, Rajashi Janakananda, the uh, most advanced disciple of my guru, when he was a boy, he earned something like three cents a day. He was very poor, but he decided he would not remain poor. By willpower, he kept on until he got out of it. You can, if you just keep your mind positive, and don't just sit there having beaming positively at everybody. Do something about it. Uh, don't st- sit there in a corner hugging yourself and giggling. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having joy and courageous joy that goes out and does what it must do. And uh, you will find that under those circumstances that No matter how many obstacles there are, you can come out in the end. This novel that I'm talking about, supposing he had been born in such poverty, supposing everything had been against him, but he found this job, and by faithfulness to his duty and creativity and whatever, he rose, and finally he met the boss's daughter and fell in love, but it was impossible for them to marry because he came from such a low stock But somehow he won the father's approval and they all uh, came out happily and he became the successor and married the girl and all the same things. Wouldn't you say, oh, that was a great story? (coughs) To go from rags to riches, to go from impossible to victory. This makes an interesting story and that is what makes your life interesting too because you have had so many things to overcome in this life, in past lives. Some people are born, as they say, with a silver spoon in their mouths. Everything seems to go well, but it won't always. I met this one woman from Australia who said to me, well, earning money is very easy. And I thought, well, there are a lot of people in this world who don't agree with you. She happened to have that good karma so that whatever she tried to do, it succeeded. But it takes time to develop that kind of good karma. And the way to develop it is by putting out energy, having joy, having confidence, 
and doing your best. And even when you fail, just get up and try again. <coughs> you will see that if you do that, that at the end, the greatest victory of all will be yours. If you have joy in your life in spite of all difficulties, you will see that in the end you will have perfect joy. Nothing in that, in that state will be able to touch you ever again. Because that is who you really are. Now, yes, I'm talking with the efforts made in, the, in delusion. And so it, there can be a lot of mistakes on the way. But basically, this attitude is there. And if you can really hold to that thought that I am a child of God's, and no matter what comes, he will take care of me, you'll be surprised how often he does take care of you. You know, there are many stories, and they're true stories too, where people, because of their faith in God, and because it was unshakable even in the midst of great trials, a master appeared to them. They didn't know it was a master always. You know, there's a lovely poem of Tagore's where this beggar is standing at his door of his little hut, and he sees this chariot coming from a distance, and he realizes it's the chariot of a great king. And he thinks, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could, if I could beg from that king, he would give me everything I want. And then, to his amazement, the chariot stops right in front of his door. And this king gets out, and the man's just quivering with excitement, thinking how wonderful all my hopes will be fulfilled. And the king approaches him, and he asks him an unthinkable question. He says, what have you to give to me? And the man is very embarrassed. He doesn't want to insult the king. He doesn't want to give him out of nothing. But he goes into his house and he has a little bag with a little bit of rice in it. So he takes one piece of rice and gives it to the king. And the king thanks him very kindly and leaves. And that night after the beggar comes back from his begging expedition and empties his sack onto the ground, he says there's that, that there's that one little piece of golden piece of rice. And he thought, oh, if I had only given him everything I had, no matter how little. This is the truth, that when you give to God, that which you give to God becomes blessed. It's not charity, for God's sakes. You're giving it to your own self. But that which you do for God and that which you offer to God and give to him is blessed a millionfold. And if that's true, how much more blessed are you when you give yourself to God? You belong to him. You don't belong to yourself. You are a part of that infinite. And when you give yourself to him, you are declaring I am that, I am not this. Don't think of anything you do for God as a sacrifice. It's no sacrifice. Somebody who was a disciple of a great saint in India, um, people were saying how wonderful it was. He gave up his professorship and uh, high position in society to become a disciple. And the guru said he didn't give up anything. He just had a good, he had a good sense of value. <laughs> He gave up nothing and received everything. That's what it's about, really. Bhaduri Mahashai, the levitating saint in autobiography of a yogi, people, because he had once been a very wealthy person, he'd given up all his money in order to seek God. And this disciple said, Oh, Master, you're so wonderful. You've given up uh, all your wealth, a great treasure, in order to serve us. And the guru said, I'm not a renunciate. I haven't given up anything. A few baubles in order to find the greatest treasure of the universe. He said, it's worldly people who are the real renunciates. What does a renunciate give up? He gives up dust for gold. You give up nothing for infinity. 
You give up limitation and bondage for becoming one with God. I mean, what, what kind of renunciation is there in that? You know, renunciate to look down on others with pride because they are swamis and mahatmas and mahants and all this. Where's the pride? What, what use is it to be proud of that? The one thing you need to give up is your ego, and that's the one thing they're still clinging to when they feel proud because they've renounced. And what have they renounced? You could be, you might have left a wealthy home. Yes, I left a wealthy home. Yes, I left a lot of beauty. I didn't sacrifice anything. There's a book of mine that will come out, I hope, soon in India. It's called Space, Light, and Harmony, the story of Crystal Hermitage, which I built with the money that my parents willed to me after they died. And uh, I knew that my father, who had never given a paisa to Ananda, would be suffering in his astral body if I gave everything to Ananda. And I knew that I would suffer if I didn't. So I prayed and I realized what I could do was build a house for myself that everybody could enjoy. And as a result, I have built what to me is probably the most beautiful home and garden I've ever seen. That's saying something. And I left it. I'll probably never see it again. I live here in India and some people say, well, he came to make money. <laughs> they don't know. But I don't consider it a sacrifice. I consider it that I'm so happy that other people are enjoying it. And I'm here with, with uh, very much less. It doesn't matter at all. God could send me to a slum. If that's where he wants me, I'll be happy there. Because happiness is inside. In a beautiful book by Thomas Merton called The Seven-Story Mountain, he mentions a couple of little old ladies whom he met in Harlem. Harlem is... Uh, probably the poorest section of New York, there may be poorer ones, but they lived there surrounded by poverty, and he said that they were saints. They had such a glow about them. It doesn't matter where you live. It matters where you are in your heart. Don't think that I must build myself a beautiful home and have this wonderful uh, garden and everything. Yes, it's nice to do. It's a pleasure for other people, and it can be a pleasure for you, but don't be attached to anything, because ultimately it's important to tell yourself, I don't own anything. Everything is God's. The thing is that when you give it to God, he gives it back to you. God gave me that garden. I, it was my karma, yes, but it was God through my karma, and he will give you anything you want. And if that's the kind of thing you want, you'll find it in the astral world far more beautiful than in this world where there's the constant inconvenience of mosquitoes and ants and everything that you find in this world, too hot, too cold, and so on. Just be detached from everything. When things are beautiful, enjoy them. But enjoy them with God. And when things are not, just say, well, God, you are my treasure. What does it matter what happens outside? You will see that with this, that you can build a new world. We've often talked about, many people have talked about how they want to create a new world. The trouble with that is that the world's a pretty slippery place. You get things just the way you want them, and suddenly they slide down again. It's sort of like that legend in Greece about the tests of Sisyphus. Sisyphus, according to his, his punishment after death, had to push this big rock up a mountain, and then it rolled down again, and he had to keep pushing it up again and again. Well, that is, in fact, and many of those old Greek legends are really symbols, allegories for realities that we have to deal with in this world. Read them with that understanding and you'll see there's deep truth in them. Don't think that this world will ever give you because everything that you do, it all comes undone sooner or later. One of my early lessons in that was my thought back when I was 18. 
And I thought, this world, is, this America is so materialistic. I want to go to a place where people are simple and have, a, uh, have no complexities and so on. So I, I went to Mexico, and with good luck or karma or whatever, I got one ride all the way to Mexico from Philadelphia. And uh, it was all a great excitement for me for a while, and this is how people are in this world. They get all excited, but the excitement comes from them. Gradually, I began to look around me, and I saw that everybody else was living a pretty humdrum life, the usual thing, job, food, children, eh, just the same old stuff. Then it became a little worse. I discovered that I could have the same stomach aches in Mexico as I could in America. I could have the same headaches as I could in America. In fact, I never got a case of dysentery so bad as I got in Mexico. I was so ill that I could hardly get to the bathroom. I'd have to lean against the wall. And I, the man in whose house I was living, who was a friend, had one of these peculiar traits that people have. He had an intolerance for illness. So all the time that I was ill, he wouldn't come near me. So there I was having to struggle through it. And... Uh, Finally, I got well enough to go to see a doctor. The doctor took one look at me and said, you've got to get to a hospital immediately. That's how ill I was. And I had streptococcus and dysentery and tonsillitis and I don't know what else. And uh, so, but with willpower and with joy, it all passes. You know, I made a little inquiry as to how much the hospital bill would cost. It was far more than I could afford. I was My parents were in Romania. I was pretty much on my own, although an uncle was, uh, he was sort of a backup in case I needed help. But uh, I was, my, the doctor told me I'd be there at least two weeks. I made these inquiries and I thought, hmm, I'd be to keep, better get out of here immediately. Well, after two days I was well and uh, was able to leave the hospital feeling just fine. I mean, at the age of 19, uh, things may be a little different. I um, have to admit that I was such a fool. First thing I did was have a uh, banana split. The worst thing you could do when you've had dysentery. But anyway, somehow I survived. The thing is that we must always keep a positive, joyful attitude and you'll find that even illness, everybody, the doctor, the nurses, everybody said, you'll have to be here that long. Because I couldn't afford to be, I hit on a very important principle, that if you will to be well, you can be well. And so, if you will to be happy, you can be happy. And if you will to create a new world, you can help to create a new world. Don't let the symptoms, which are pretty bad, don't let them get you down. Have faith that God, who is in charge of this world, will, he knows what he's doing. And if you work with the light, if you fight on the side of the angels of light, you will help toward a final victory that I know is coming. Let me let us sing this song to you, a new tomorrow. Joy to you. When the dawn breaks and then the morning sends the sun high in the sky, who would hide from heaven's glory? Who would pass the challenge by? La 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 there's a morning for every nation when the sun's high in the sky. There's a time for every people to affirm their destiny. La 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 even so, all of us together can create a better land. Leave the post on new tomorrow, which for all who understand. There's a morning for every nation when the sun's high in the sky. There's a time for every people to affirm their destiny. 
Even so, all of us together can create a better land. Leave the past and new tomorrow waits for all who understand. La 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 la. Leave the past, a new tomorrow waits for all.